Hello, 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 and welcome to this video where uh, I'm doing a top five uh, favorite movies that I've watched uh, this year, of that came out this year, of 2023. Why a top five and not a top ten, I hear you ask? Well, that's because I've actually been very, very picky with what new movies I've watched this year. And I've only watched eight movies that came out in 2023 um so far um that's just because these are the ones that interested me the most um six of which actually appeared uh as cinevlogs um where i obviously went to go see them in cinema and vlogged my experience and i'm happy enough to have done that because i've actually managed to act it gets me out into the cinema uh a lot more than i usually do in a year um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. This is my top five favorite movies that have come out in 2023. Starting at number five, uh, I've given it to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Now, this is a perfect send off. This was a perfect send off for the Guardians, you know. Um, it wraps pretty much everything up, but also leaves room for the Guardians to come back because, you know, um, uh, Chris Pratt said he wasn't going to come back. Dra uh, Dave Batista said he wasn't going to come back after this. And so, in a sense, it done what it was, it was supposed to do, which was wrap up these characters, you know. Drax is left on um, the, the floating head to look after all these children. Uh, Mantis, she goes off to find uh, her own way in life because she's always, you know, done what... Um, Peter's dad and her dad wanted and then just took around with the Guardians. She's never really done what she wanted to do. And Peter, well, Peter's finally going back to, to Earth again. But not just Earth, but to visit his granddad and to reconnect with his human side. Um, you know, since he's part human. And it's just a perfect end. You know, Rocket, uh, he get he finally gets to deal with the trauma that was caused uh by making it rocket what rocket is you know um my only gripe with the film is the fact that adam warlock who has been built up to be this big massive thing just did nothing in the entire movie and got molly whopped so much that's my only gripe for the film um but yeah guardians of the galaxy volume three um is my number five so number four is going to go to the Hunger Games ballads of songbirds and snake and snakes. So yeah, uh, I absolutely love this movie. The only, there there are some gripes that I have with it, you know, that it glosses over quite a bit from the books, and it should have definitely been a two-parter. Um, but besides that, it done fantastic. You know, I loved. Everything. Viola Davis blew me away as Dr. Grawl. Peter Dinklage blew me away as Keska Highbottom. You know, um, and everyone else in the cast was absolutely amazing. And to actually see it being, you know, seeing it on the big screen was amazing. You know, um, it definitely looked like how I imagined it when I was reading it. But again, the main issue I had is just how quickly they ran through the uh the third act you know because there was so much that actually happens in the third act that is just not shown you know um if memory serves correct Sejanus doesn't show up until after uh Corlanus gets to district 12 um then of course there's the whole Corlanus meeting with um Sejanus's father and there's a bunch of other stuff, you know, them out in the woods collecting all these mocking jays that are mixed between jabber jays and mockingbirds um, to send back to Dr. Grawl. Um, and it's, it is what, like, it's a really great movie and it's the second best Hunger Games film in my honest opinion. Um, so yeah, moving on to number three, I give it to Oppenheimer. Yes, uh, my first Nolan film um tech pretty much is my was my first nolan film and it's one that i was really looking forward to because i love these biopic types of movies you know 
I love Nowhere Boy is one of my favorite Beatles biopics. Um, I love The Imitation Game, which I watched for the very first time this year, uh, which I absolutely loved. And I went in uh, with high expectations and uh, those expectations were met. It was really, really good. The sound that was done in the cinema was excellent. My aunt who watched it at home afterwards um, had issues with that. But then again, that's just, that's Nolan in a nutshell, apparently. Um, but yeah, it definitely deserved a three hour runtime. And like, I would be surprised if uh, it doesn't get a lot of Oscar nominations. I'm actually recording this the day after I went to see Ballads of Songbirds and Snakes back in November. Uh, so I don't know if, uh, if they have, if it has been uh, nominated yet. So my second pick is going to what was my most anticipated movie of the year uh, after the trailer dropped. And that is Tetris. Yes, a film about a video game. Uh, what a surprise. Um, yes, I absolutely loved Tetris because I knew the backstory behind how Tetris came to the West and how batshit bonkers it is. And of course, the movie does take some artistic liberations with a lot of the stuff that didn't happen, uh, such as the car chase and, you know, the Russian government being more involved and setting it up with, uh, with um, you know, Hank and that but overall i loved it i loved it so much that i watched it twice the day it came out i loved it that much um it just was absolutely amazing and was originally my favorite movie of the year um until october happened and the five nights at Freddy's film came out yes my number one my favorite film of the year is gonna go to five nights at Freddy's. I, as a massive Five Nights at Freddy's fan, I love the movie. Now, I know it's very divisive, but uh, between uh, people who aren't fans of this series and people who who are, you know, there's some fans that absolutely hated it, and there's a lot of fans like myself that absolutely loved it, because that's essentially what the Five Nights at Freddy's movie was about, is geared towards the fans of the franchise. There is so much in it that I absolutely loved. And it was probably one of my best theatre experiences. Yes, no, uh, it actually came out in both theatre and on Peacock of the same day. I went to go see it technically two days early because it came out two days early in Ireland. And it was definitely one of the better theatre experiences I've ever had. Uh, because um, there were people, you know gasping, laughing at a lot of this stuff when Vanessa said that uh, she was William Afton's uh, daughter. That got a massive shock. Hell, even my jaw dropped. And by the end of the film, a lot of people were clapping at it, which is the first time for me experiencing something like that. And I absolutely loved it. And I even then, the day the film came out for everyone else, I was hanging out with two of my friends and I showed it to them. The One of them was a mild Five Nights at Freddy's fan. He knew of the stuff, but he wasn't sure on it, you know, with the, given the animatronics. And the other friend knew next to nothing about the Five Nights at Freddy's series, but loved it. Both of them loved it. And I even loved it on a second rewatch. And I love seeing them, you know, trying to figure it out as it's going along. Me obviously knowing what's happened because I seen it the day, uh, two days prior. Um, so yeah, that is going to wrap this up. So thank you all for watching. This isn't the only top 10 list I have um, about movies because I have one coming out where I uh, do a top 10 of my favorite movies that I watched for the very first time this year that have all that came, that didn't come out this year. They came out uh, obviously a couple of years back and it was my first time watching them this year. So yeah, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all for that uh, list very, very soon.